at this point you're probably wondering what the heck is this man gonna do with this piece of junk well I think you're right in a way but it might be worth the hassle I've always wondered is it worth spending a small amount of money and buying a spares and repair chainsaw on eBay I only paid 24 pounds for this bad boy so I hope it was worth it um, I suppose we'll find out soon keep watching and I hope you enjoy the content I set a 50 pound budget this is about 60 US dollars for the whole project um, so this was for buying the saw and all spare parts in order to get it running I did think that this was going to be a bit hard and almost impossible, but let's see if I was wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you how I managed to get my hands on probably the cheapest genuine steel chainsaw in the world. And I'm also going to show you where I bought it from, the condition of the saw before the restoration, um, and uh, what parts I needed in order to bring it back to the condition that this saw should have been in. By the way, this is going to be a full tear down cleaning and rebuilding video so whilst i'm entertaining you um, you would be surprised how much you could actually learn from a video like this anyway enough chit chat let's start with the video i knew i wasn't going to be able to get something big so i was initially hoping to get an old steel saw or a very small ms 170 171 180 181 um, something in this range but fortunately I managed to get a better and more powerful MS211 which shares most parts with MS171-181 um, and this meant that I had a better chance of finding cheap spare parts for my MS211. I spent a few days looking for a bargain genuine steel chainsaw and uh, I came across this MS211. It was an auction, there was no bids, no reserve and of course it was only fair that I won it because I was the first person to place the bid. Um, yeah, anyway, joke on the side. I won it at a 24 pounds. This is about 29 US dollars at today's exchange rate. And I was over the moon. The delivery of the saw cost me six pounds. So at this point I was sitting at 30 pounds spent, which meant I only had 20 left for any spare parts. The next thing I want to show you is the picture of the saw on eBay. Looking at it and the condition that is in, I had full confidence I was going to get this thing running for under 50 quid. Nothing kills the enthusiasm of a keen chainsaw fanatic. As you can tell by the only picture that the seller uploaded, the saw is well stored, well looked after and definitely came from a good home. I noticed a few things immediately in the picture and as you can tell the orange plastic cover on the top is missing and the air filter. I bought these before the saw was delivered as I wanted to save myself a bit of time and regardless of the condition I was determined I will fix it full stop. I found this cover which was reasonably priced at £10 plus £3.50 for postage and it had the black rubber locking tab on the top. I'm just saying this because most of them at the time didn't have it and of course it was no good to me because it couldn't lock in place. I took a gamble and I messaged the seller asking if he would sell this cover for 650 as you do and the seller accepted my offer which meant that I can have this item including delivery for just 9.99 okay so let's get the calculator out so 30 pounds so far plus 10 for the cover meant I was still 10 pounds under budget which meant I can afford to buy a new air filter I had a look again and found the cheapest air filter on eBay for just £5 including delivery. I made him an offer he couldn't refuse, but he refused and he came back with an offer of £4.75, which meant I had £5.25 change and I was still under budget. Enough bargaining and calculations, let's see what came in the parcel. As expected, the saw came well packed in a bag of coal and some special cardboard to protect the bar and the chain. I have no idea what the previous owner used this chainsaw for, but I can tell you one thing, it was definitely not used for cutting wood. Here are some more photos of the saw in clear daylight so you can see the condition a little bit better.
I received the saw a few weeks ago, but to be honest with you, um, it's been raining constantly, so I didn't get a chance to go outside and start it. So I'm excited now to see if this thing is actually going to start. Um, it feels like it has plenty of compression. I will check the compression with a proper tester, um, but I'm excited to see if it's going to start, if it's going to fire up, and if it's actually um, in working condition. So let's not waste any time and let's give it a try. Oh boy. Yes, baby. Oh, something's wrong. Let's try it again. Yep, it was never going to be that easy. Okay, so let me tell you what my plan is. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the spark plug. I'm going to use my compression tester and I'm going to check the compression. Um, having said that, I'm not too worried about what reading I'm going to get just because I know that there is plenty of compression. You can feel it on the rope and uh, it could be a serious leak from the carburetor on, or the crankshaft seals or the actual uh, crankcase. Oh boy, you know what's coming. Let's strip her down to the bare bones.
Now it's time for the good old pressure washer. Oh boy, 